Evolution of a Legend, The Life of Sir Larry Constantine Making Black Beautiful Long before the phrase became a reality, there was a Trinidadian who embodied the concept and eventually emerged as a socio-political icon in both Caribbean and British history. Larry Nicholas Constantine was born in 1901 in Maraval to Anais Pascal and Lebrun Constantine. Lebrun was an overseer of Coco Estates and among the first free generations of blacks in Trinidad. Larry was actually the grandson and great-grandson of slaves. Father Lebrun Constantine was quite a remarkable man and a great inspiration to his son. His career in cricket as an international player paved the way for a young Larry. Having left school in his mid-teens without attaining a secondary education, Constantine at first worked as a clerk in a solicitor's office in Port of Spain and later with the oil company Trinidad Leaseholds in South Trinidad. But cricket consumed him. Initially, he played with a team led by his father called Shannon and made his debut in England in 1928. The following year, he migrated to Britain and joined the Nelson team in the Lancashire Cricket League. Despite his talent and brilliance, Constantine was never given the captaincy of the West Indies team, a position he fought for tirelessly. It was his belief that a team with predominantly black players should have a black captain but the cricketing authorities were adamant that the team could only be competently led by a white captain. Although he played a pivotal role in the West Indies winning the series against England in 1934 to 1935. In 1939, he played his last match at the age of 38 and lived to see Sir Frank Worrell become the first black captain of the West Indies team in 1960. Forever the activist and cause célèbre for the rights of blacks, Constantine became involved in the League of Colored Peoples in Britain, a body that was extremely agitative during the 1930s and 1940s. Here, he would rise to the position as president of the League. Again, his personality and steadfast character shone through. Constantine's ability and prestige as a top sportsman his drive and ambition in seeking the best for himself and those whom he sought to elevate, and his belief in black pride and ascendancy was an unbeatable combination. Another hidden talent also emerged during this World War II period as the erstwhile Constantine did broadcasts and conducted lectures for the armed forces personnel. Although Constantine's career was high profile, the family continued to face discrimination. In the 1940s, he sued a popular London hotel for denying them accommodation and won the case. He said he did this not only for himself, but for all blacks. This incident inspired him to write the book Color Bar with C.L.R. James in 1954. In 1946, Larry Constantine was made a member of the British Empire for his services to Britain. On his return home, Constantine at first worked as an assistant legal advisor to Trinidad Leasehold Limited. Then, in 1956, a man by the name of Eric Eustace Williams persuaded him to enter politics. For Constantine, it was no small start. He became chairman of the newly formed People's National Movement. When the PNM swept to power in 1956, Larry Constantine won the Tunapuna seat by less than 200 votes and was appointed Minister of Communications, Works and Public Utilities. In 1961, Larry Constantine left politics. He announced that he was not a politician and could not deal with the rough and tumble nature of Trinidad politics in particular. In 1961, he was appointed the first High Commissioner to London. It was felt that owing to his past experiences, he was the obvious choice for the job. In 1963, one such incident drew significant media attention. Constantine had intervened in an issue where West Indians were being denied jobs as bus conductors in Bristol. It was felt that some of his utterances were less than diplomatic. The British were annoyed, but Williams objected because the affected workers were Jamaicans, and Williams considered this outside of Constantine's jurisdiction. 
Constantine resigned in response in 1964, and the Williams-Constantine breach was never healed. With an exit from his political and diplomatic career, Leary resumed legal practice in London at the age of 63. When the Race Relations Board in Britain was formed, he became a member and from inception was an important contributor. Additionally, in 1967, he was appointed the first black rector of St. Andrews University, where his daughter was enrolled. A year later, he became the first black governor of the British Broadcasting Corporation and continued to work as a freelance broadcaster, a job he had enjoyed since the 1930s. In 1969, Larry Constantine's career culminated when he became the first person of African descent to be given a life peerage, being created Baron Constantine of Maraval and Nelson in the county of Palantine of Lancaster. Larry Constantine was now to be addressed as Sir Larry. Sir Larry's introduction to the House of Lords was a great occasion. Sadly, he was only able to speak once, but in typical Larry Constantine style and sentiment, it was a fervent plea for Britain not to neglect the interests of the West Indian population if she joined the European common market. That would be remembered as his first and final contribution in the prestigious British Parliament. In July 1971, Sir Larry died of lung failure in Hampstead, London. He was given a state funeral in Trinidad and awarded the Trinity Cross posthumously. Sir Larry claims his place in the Parliament and the memoirs of the outstanding people of Trinidad and Tobago.